Welcome to No Budget, the hashtag stuck at home edition. So we are doing a special episode today with Kiera Viale, who we previously had on the show and spoke to about her film, The New Music. Since we spoke to her previously, uh, she's picked up distribution for the film, and we just kind of like to catch up and see how everything is going with her. The film itself is uh, starring a brilliant actor by the name of Killian McAvoy, who plays a young man who finds that he is suffering from an early onset Parkinson's. The catch is that he's a concert pianist and it's interfering with his ability to play. And so he joins a punk band and um, I guess we'll get into it from there. Is that a rough, roughly a decent description of the film, Kira? Am I forgetting uh, something? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Perfect, well, thanks. And uh, well, can I just add that when we spoke yeah. to her last, that you'd done the principal photography, but you were in post production. Yeah. So there was a, there was at least two years, I'd say, from our interview yeah. to the time it was finished. Like so, mm -hmm. maybe you can just tell us how that went. Yeah, yeah. no, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, uh, I remember clearly the interview, and it was so nice, by the way, for you guys to to have us on on the show that day. And I just remember all the excitement there was about it's done. You know, it's we, we finished the uh, principal photography. Uh, in my case, um, there was so much to go still. And I think at this at that time, I didn't know how much there was to go uh, because this is my first feature film and I only done a little bit of post-production scenes. So it's been a, it's been a really uh, interesting journey um, into s sound, uh, post-audio sound, for example, that's been very, very interesting for me to go through and also we had to go and do pickups we had to do b-rolls and um that was the year of the referendum and uh that meant also that some of our b-rolls and you know, had to be postponed in in the schedule because all the posters were out for for the referendum so like all those things happened and so it was definitely another stage of uh not knowing everything that was going to happen and trying to uh, figure out sort of uh in my case sort of figure out as i went uh, it's been it's been an amazing amazing journey and it went all very well it did take more time than it would take with more resources uh, but everybody stood behind us there was a big big force and lots of friendship lots of encouragement family friends new people that were just adding up to the team um in in, in the post sound for example we had some amazing foley artists we had you know more musicians that came in saying oh by the way do you need a, a song so there were like more of that happened and it definitely was uh it was a great great experience and a lovely journey and so for anyone listening just a quick explanation uh, about kind of post-production it's not making a film isn't just grabbing a camera getting out there and shooting it throwing it into an editing program and being done so kind of what kiara's talking about there is a lot of work goes in after the fact. So maybe you're not getting good enough sound on the day and you needed to go in and re-record dialogue or uh, like she mentioned, music. So you might have to bring in music and that kind of stuff. And then there's also what's called kind of sound design and sound editing to where you've got to kind of cut out background noise, add, add other layers to it so that you've got a full film. And so uh, it, there's kind of a lot that goes into it. And that's kind of what you're talking about there. And did you yeah. have to then go out and get additional uh, funding and stuff? Because I know you guys did some like um, uh, a few funding rounds for the film as well. We did a great uh, pub quiz. That was something we've done that we just love the experience as well. And so like that, that helped us. Uh, and it was also such for me, like there was March uh, last year, yeah, March 2019. And uh, that was an experience where so many people that were curious about the film, that were behind the film, some people had donated to the film before and they just wanted to know what was up. They came up that evening. So there was such like also a moment for me to, you know, go up and tell people, this is where we are, this is what we're doing, this is why we're here. Because the new music has always been such a, um, like it's been a film that, you know, me and Philip thought about, you know, making together and, and such. But, and then, you know, the young Parkinson's Ireland came along to help us through and then more people did. So it's always been about, it was always a lot of being about community and about, you know, friendship and, you know, just people we knew. Um, those of the people in the film came from our uh, contacts in the Dublin Filmmakers Collective and, and such. So those, that, that was an important day for me. Uh, just of just kind of saying to people, this is happening. You know, don't 
don't think that we're not going to finish this. We are. So that, that was a thing we did. And then for the rest of it was, uh, was self-funded. So. But it was so amazing. So I saw it in the IFI in screen number one. And I remember opening the door. I think, Carl, you were there as well, weren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I remember opening the door and it was so packed, I couldn't get a seat. And having interviewed you the last time in, in the studio in Dublin, when you were still finishing the film, it was so inspirational for, for myself to go in and see the atmosphere and, and the kind of people and the support you had. And it was, it was electric. How, how did you find that night when it was all finished? Well, it, it was, uh, you know, like the, our, our premiere was at Indie Cork. You were also there, Claire, and uh, and that was a very, very special moment. Uh, but I, I was very scared. Of course, I was really, really scared of, you know, are people going to like this? But also there was a little bit more backing because lots of people also came from the cast. We had lost some of our crew. You know, if you know, if you remember that evening, we had everyone lined up by the screen at the end, everybody said what they did in the film. So it was lots of us. So it was a, a night of celebration. But the iFi screening then was very, very special because I, I remember arriving early and just kept seeing people coming in that I didn't know. <laughs> that nobody, you know, I was like, this is just a person that's going in buying a ticket, you know? So that definitely was very special. And just just the um, the answer from the audience and, and just feeling, you know, like I sitting there and, you know, I'm always with the new music. It's it's always for me. It's, are people when are people going to start laughing? It's, you know, are, are the jokes working? You know, what, what is what was the vibe going? And you can really feel that when you're in the audience, how people are, you know, because you know what's going to happen next. So you kind of try to see how people are reacting and the more they get into it and the more I see that the film is doing what it's supposed to do, the more I feel relieved that the message is coming across, you know, so that, that was for me, that was a, an incredible, incredible experience. And um, also knowing that the film was going to be moved to the biggest screen <laughs> as well, that was very special. And, and just to touch back on, on the audio, um, Post production, I was talking about that. That was I'm so delighted. I'm so happy that that we put so much effort into it because of the the film. There's so much music everywhere in it, you know. So I'm so happy that that also I think made made the film so much in terms of emotion and how much you know people were being carried through the film thanks to the soundtrack and the sound design. And where did you find a lot of the music? Was it like written locally or? So um, it so the two songs that um that are played by the band in the film. Um, it, they are original pieces that were composed by uh, Zach Stevenson from the band Monkey, their Dublin-based band. So we got in touch with him before we started shooting the film all together, of course. <laughs> and I, I said, I talked to him about what kind of sound I was looking for and he composed two songs that the actors learned and so that those were the ones physically performed um hide that plays around half an hour in and home that plays different times and then all together at the end of the film and then um the rest uh, so then then we had um, a lot of of commercial music in it so lots of tracks of different bands and they kind of come off from all over. So there's UK bands, there's a band from the Netherlands, Intellectual, there is a band from Israel, not on tour. Um, there's a Dublin, um, sorry, um, you know, it's an Irish um, singer songwriter, Bird Woman. There's a band, a Dublin band, Checkpoint. So there's a little bit of, of everything. And they mostly came from people that we knew. Uh, Killian is friends and he used to have a podcast when he was living in, uh, in Scotland. And when he was there, he interviewed bands and had bands on his show. And so he kept contacts, contacts with these people. So we were able to get in touch and say, this is the film we're making. This is where the money is going. You know, it's a charity thing. Do you want to help? Then there was this, the uh, UK band uh, Crywank, who uh, actually got in touch via Twitter with us, just saying, we heard about the film. Can we do something? So that's, that's, that's a very special thing that happened to me as well. So being able to get get to know this band and pick a song so that's that's been very special the, the last bit i want to touch is also that there is original piano music in the film and that's composed and performed by david sangster who's a pianist from the uk and he has parkinson's so he also was a person who got involved in the project yeah was it just when while, while we were editing 
because I was looking for piano music as well. I didn't know, I just thought I was going to use very famous piano songs everywhere. And then he got in touch and said, would you like, you know, what can I do? And again, for me, it was just, just music, <laughs> you know, so that, that that's also a big collaboration that happened. So um, there's a few, there's a few scenes where you just, where you hear David playing. So that that's very uh, unique, I think. I, I don't know, but like in my experience of that hasn't happened to me yet, so. <laughs> And it's funny because I, I wasn't aware of young Parkinson's. Like I knew Parkinson's is associated with older people. It was only since you started making the film and I was talking to you about it. So it's, it's such a great film to highlight, you know, this, this issue. And even at the, there's a Q&A in the IFI with um, a gentleman who had young Parkinson's. Yeah. So it, it's, that's such a great film to, to make people aware. Did you work much with people with young Parkinson's doing research? And how does that come about? So um, I started off, so I wrote the first draft of the script and, and um, which, you know, and then while we were working on it and we were doing pre-production, so Philip and me were, um, Philip Kidd and me were seeing each other and just going through the locations, thinking about what to do. And that was before, you know, so that would have been around uh, April or May. And then one day we were driving back and we were sitting in the car and then we, we thought, oh, this, what, what if we decide to make this for charity, you know, which, you know, it hadn't crossed our minds. We didn't even know if the film was actually going to be made or filmed. And then, so I got in touch with Parkinson's Ireland and they got me in touch with young Parkinson's Ireland. And then there was a few, you know, email exchanges and I was put in contact and I met with uh, Claire, uh, who's a lovely, lovely person. Um, at the time she was 27. She was diagnosed when she was, I think, 24. Uh, so I just laid, like I sent her the script. She read the script. We sat, you know, in Starbucks together and she um, basically told me her story and what she thought about the script. I had lots of questions, mostly, you know, kind of very clear questions. Is this a scene that makes sense? Was the, is that you know basically just is, is what I've written out of the research that I made by myself truthful enough and she guided us and you know in, in the in the right direction and um, so that was around that that's more or less how we started filming and then um, we got back in touch with them after we finished uh, principal photography and then so we kind of kept them um, updated with this is what we're doing this is what we're doing sort of thing you know we got in touch with um, I, I met uh, Joe Condon, who uh, was the head of, of Young Parkinson's Ireland um, as well. And then we had, we showed them the, the second cut of the film in, you know, spring um, 2018. <laughs> you know, and then that was another moment of, this is what we actually filmed. What do you think? You know, so then again, there was an exchange there. That's where I met Gary, who was there at the uh, IFI. So he was one of the people who sat there and watched the second cut of the music out of, you know, so ages away from what it, it, it happened to be at the end. So this is kind of sort of how I met Gary. And uh, from then on, there was a lot, you know, again, more contact and it kind of it grew as we went. Um, you know, they, they helped us. They, they, they were at the quiz. They had a few tables at the quiz and then the, they um, involved us in a couple of, um, um, of, what is the English for that? A couple of initiatives <laughs> they've done. So we had a way to show them a little clip, to show them the trailer and just kept going with, with this relationship and, and which I think culminates definitely in Gary and, you know, coming up, you know, and talk with me at the i5. I think that was amazing. I, I hope that that's going to happen so many more times. And I hope that as far as the film goes, someone who had Parkinson's will be there to, having the chance to talk about it because that's, that's the reason why the film exists is to create awareness so who better than people like Gary can talk about it you know definitely because I find it very moving and very emotional to see this this young man with Parkinson's early early onset Parkinson's with um he wants to become a, a musician and it's just, it's so just heartbreaking scenes in it like he's trying to to um play the piano and his his hands are shaking you know it's just it's 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 so moving and and told with such sincerity you know, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely, hopefully more people will see this film. And one thing I noticed, it's so great to see Dublin portrayed in film so well. And I know you're not Irish, you're, you're, you're Italian, yeah. but sometimes, like I'm, I, I've lived in Dublin for the, on now for the last number of years, and sometimes you don't see the beauty in your own city. 
So it was so lovely that you captured Dublin so well, like especially the outside shots. And did you find it difficult shooting outside, especially with sometimes the light in, in Ireland? I mean, our weather can be very temperamental, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, 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 we, we shot the new music in the summer and then when we went back for b rolls, it was spring again. So definitely that helped light-wise, you know? But this is also, you know, Philip being... Philip Kidd being amazing, he's an amazing cinematographer. So loads of that is also his skills in finding, look, oh look, at the, we literally went out with the camera together and we were just looking like around and like, how about that, you know? And we just went to like, I had a map of Dublin and I started crossing the streets that we went into and we just kept covering areas and we, you know, we went and shot, you know, so much stuff. Of course, like around the areas that, that the film was actually going to be set into that we thought. And then we did some nights, some day, and then we picked what we thought was, of course, like, you know, most evocative shots there. So loads of, that's, that's when it comes to the B-rolls. And for the film itself and the narrative, I just, uh, we just sort of went, went with it. And, you know, the, the, the actors are you know, everybody in the cast, Killian, Martina, Jack and Patrick are incredible. Like they, I was just literally saying, you just walk, you know, and we'll film you while you're walking. And they were just like, OK, we'll walk. But they were walking in character, so it was working, you know. So all those scenes just worked because they were just, they, they just embodied so much that sense of being a band, of being together or being friends for years and years. You know, that really kind of uh, created those scenes where you see them going around and just be themselves. Nothing fake about it, you mean, like they are. Yeah, they are. yeah, that's what I mean, very truthful, mm. you know, nothing much set up and not trying to be a band, but just trying, you know, you know, they don't, this is something I, I, I love about the cellmates, uh, which is the name of the band in the film, they look like they're a band. Mm -hmm. yeah, and like you can tell there's such great band. chemistry between them, like they're, I'd say they're, they're all really good friends. I know some of them personally, and I know they're, they're good friends in real life, you can, you can see it on screen. Like there's such great chemistry between all, all the, the lead actors in the band. So it makes a massive difference, isn't it? It's, it's, well, it makes it really easy. But he, like, like if you had five people who didn't get on, it would probably yeah. be more difficult, you know? Yeah, we did a bit of rehearsals, but it's also just them coming in with their personality and loving their, like liking their characters and being in them and uh, just feeling at home in, in those people that they were portraying. So. That's also down to, you know, them being just amazing actors and I've been, you know, so blessed with such an amazing cast all together. Like everybody. So, um, what, what's um, happening with the film now? Uh, so after the uh, premiere at Indie Cork uh, of the film, we were approached by Silver Mountain Productions, who has an arm called Silver Mountain Distribution. And they, uh, they saw the film, they really liked it. And so they proposed us to take, you know, to take it for, you know, worldwide distribution. And that's of course been fantastic for us because this is like, you know, after all, all the, the journey throughout, you know, getting the film to actually getting, you know, making his own way into the world. I think it's, it's, it's really uh, amazing. It's been, a, it's been a, a little challenging for me personally, because when you're so close to the thing you've done, you know, if even something like this for me, especially maybe because again, I've been so involved in the process throughout and I kind of sort of felt a little bit like, do I want to give away, you know, what, what, you know, all that kind of sense, you know, but like, of course, that's just, uh, you know, being emotionally close to whatever you create creatively made and, you know, uh, kind of wanting to control everything about it, you know. And you, and you were, it was shown in Chicago, the Chicago Irish Film Festival back yeah. in, it was the end of February. And I yeah. had it last year with a good friend of ours, Savannah, and it's such a terrific festival. And um, how did you find Chicago and how did you find the, the American audience response to it? Um, so Chicago was incredible. It was a lovely experience. Like I know you guys went and it's, it's, been, it's been great. Um, we were also quite lucky to come out of Chicago right before the, the, all the lockdowns started oh, to God. happen you know that like it was you know if that happened a week or two weeks later it would have been very different it might we might not be able to travel and, and everything so and Killian and me went over there and it was a beautiful um beautiful experience we had such a warm welcome the festival was so nice so well organized but just the, the warmth and, and, the, and everybody involved uh Jude is incredible uh you know it just feels like there's so much heart behind it 
and all the films were so carefully chosen as well like everything you know we went to see a lot of the films and we just had such a great great experience just sitting there watching what their selection was of the shorts and so like we really thought of really nice and they just took care of like looked after us so so well you know like it's been so nice and the we had a good turn up we didn't have a huge turn up in chicago but also that that's that's you know it's very un understandable because you know nobody really knew us uh, over there so but there was there was you know anyway a good good amount of people who came and again we had uh, we improvised we did we, we were given the chance of a q a there as well it was loads of questions there's something i really noticed there like people not afraid of asking questions like loads of questions and then they come to you afterwards and they keep asking you things so there's been a nice evening as well because there was lots of confrontation between us and the audience and afterwards more questions and so like you know it's been i think it did touch the heart of the people who watched it which again it's it's my uh you know it's my you know it's the reason why this was made and have you put into any other festivals well um we didn't uh personally you know because um right after like why when we went to chicago we had already been taken over for distribution so we were we were we are you know, um, hoping something great will come from uh, from this. So we haven't heard back from festivals yet. Um, and of course, now with the, with, the, with the current situation, everything is a little bit up in the air in terms of what what's going to happen and where the film is going to go next. So I don't have an answer for, let's say, what's the next screening will be. Um, I'm hoping, I was really, really, really hoping to um, jump on board of the... Uh, uh, Parkinson's Awareness Month of April this month which from today is still Parkinson's Awareness Month and during the whole month and doing particularly the second week of April the association organizes every year loads of things so um, I was hoping to organize a screening in or more than one screening of the film this year during that week or during this month and then of course this didn't happen so um, yeah so my our plans went a little bit out of the window um, at the moment <laughs> Yeah, I know it's so hard to know what's going to happen in the next few months with film festivals and because Fastnet is being cancelled and so many film festivals are being cancelled. So yeah. the, all the whole film industry, it's so hard to know. But it's it's just it's such a terrific film. And I'm so proud of you having interviewed you and I've known you the last say, two, three years. Yeah. Um, I think it's just amazing achievement. It's so inspiring. Um, so hopefully you'll get distribution and more people should definitely, definitely see this film. Yeah. And it's just terrific. So we've got a few minutes left. So before we wrap up, uh, are you working on something else now? Um, okay, so yeah, I am writing, I, I finished writing a draft of a new feature uh, in the last few days. I'm going to give it, like I'm doing the actual, the usual rest of the material for a few days to go back into the second draft. So I'm writing a new film. It's set in Dublin again um, because I love Dublin. <laughs> so this is another story set in Dublin and I'm exploring new themes um, but again it has this urban sense to it and so I'm just working on new material. I have a short film it's called The Plat that I filmed with Conor Tobin at the cinematography and that's been submitted to a bunch of festivals in Ireland so I'm hoping that those I'm hoping absolutely all these festivals will go ahead um, but I'm also happy that you know, I think it's a situation where if filmmakers can submit their films to festivals that they support regardless of knowing is this festival going to go ahead i think it's a great thing to do because festivals need they need support to exist so if you want those festivals to have another you know edition next year or if you just want to be supporting them i think sending the film over it's a good idea so i've done that regardless and even if you know if, if any of those weren't to go ahead i'm still delighted that i did something for them you know, just to, to support the festival, especially in Ireland, the independent festivals and such. Right. Well, uh, we always like to end every show with giving you the opportunity. If people want to track you down, where can they find you or where can they find out more information about the new music if they want? So um, the new music is on Twitter and Facebook, uh, on Instagram, as you can find it as a new music film, the new music feature film. And we have a YouTube channel that has loads of our uh, in-production video behind the scenes. So if you want to have a look at how we look like 
in 2017 shooting. There's lots of videos of us doing that, plus the trailer and more information. And um, so yeah, you can find us basically on all social media. And um, I'm also on social media myself and my company, Beautiful Productions. It's also on social media. So that's, that's me. You can find me there. Perfect. And follow the film because <laughs> there's going to be more happening. So to anyone watching, I'll throw links to all of that uh, in the show notes so you can uh, track Kara down if you'd like. And with that, I guess we should say thanks for joining us. And thanks everyone for having me and thank you everyone for watching.